Hi, I'm Joe with Family Handyman. Installing crown molding on your kitchen cabinets may just be the finishing touch you've been looking for. It's not that difficult to do yourself with a few tools and some knowledge, a couple of tricks of the trade, you'll be stepping back looking at your handiwork in no time. Let me show you how I like to do it. There are a few things to think about when installing crown molding on your cabinets. First of all, what kind of cabinets do you have? Do you have a cabinet with a face frame like this cabinet? Or do you have a European style cabinet with no face frame? Also, what kind of doors do you have? Are your doors fully overlaid like this one? Or are they partial overlaid like this cabinet here? Once you determine what kind of doors and cabinets you have, that'll determine how you attach your crown molding to the cabinet. One technique to attach crown molding is directly to the face frame. This works well if you have doors that are partial overlay leaves you about an inch to attach the, the molding right to the face frame. Cabinets with full overlaid doors, you have no place to attach the molding to, so what you need to do is add a nailing cleat to it. You can choose to put the nailing cleat flush with the face frame, or better yet, pull it out so the molding is flush with the doors, giving you a nice finished look. Before you head to the store to purchase your crown molding, measure all your cabinets, the width and the depth, to get the lineal feet of what you need for your project. There are several different styles of crown molding to choose from. Determine what your style of cabinet is before purchasing. Also, there are different types of crown molding. There's cabinet crown molding, also wall to ceiling crown molding. Always wanna buy eight to 12 feet extra. You can always return it. The secret to what makes crown molding look so majestic on top of your cabinet is the compound miter joint in each corner. What's a compound miter joint? Well, the compound miter is two angles, the bevel and the miter on each piece. Put them together and you have this beautiful compound miter joint on top of your cabinet. There are a few ways to cut these angles, the compound method or the non-compound method. It all depends on what tools you have available to you. The compound method refers to cutting the piece while it's laying flat on a table. You can use a table saw or a compound miter saw to make your cuts. Before you make your settings on your saw, you need to know the spring angle of the molding. The spring angle refers to the angle between the molding and the wall or the molding and the ceiling. This one happens to be 45 degrees. For standard 45 crown molding, the bevel is 30 degrees and the miter is 35.3 degrees. The non-compound method way of cutting crown molding refers to resting the top of the molding against the table and the bottom of the molding against the fence. Then you just set your saw at a 45 and you're good to go. Well, the problem with this is that when you're cutting, the piece can slide down. Not a very safe thing. So you need a stop block. You want to adhere a stop block to the table. You could do that with carpet tape or even a spot of hot glue and pull it off later. Or you could make an auxiliary fence like I did over here. Here's my auxiliary fence. It's basically a table and a fence with a stop block attached directly to the saw. Now let's talk about cutting angles. When cutting angles, you wanna set your saw to half the amount of the degree of the corner you're cutting. So if you're cutting a 90 degree angle, you wanna set your saw at 45. For making an outside corner, you have a right side and left side piece. To cut the left side of the piece, you swing your saw 45 degrees to the left and you place your molding upside down to the right of the blade. Then you're ready to cut. To cut the right side of the joint, turn your saw 45 degrees to the right and place your piece of molding upside down on the left side of the blade. Moving on to inside corners, to cut the left side of the joint, swing your saw to the right 45 degrees and place your molding upside down 
on the right side of the blade. To cut the right side of the molding, swing your saw to the left 45 degrees and place your molding on the left side of the blade, upside down. Now that we know how to cut angles, let's move on to installing the crown molding. Remember there's a, a top and a bottom to the molding. Take a piece a little bit larger than the side of your cabinet. Just set it up against the cabinet and make a mark right at the face frame. Now for the front piece, again, make sure you got the top and bottom of the piece. Set it up flat. tight to the wall, make a mark on the back side. All right, let's head back to the saw and make some cuts. So the long piece, the front piece, is the left side of the joint. We have our saw set up properly. Okay, moving on to the right piece. Swing your saw over to the right 45 degrees. Place your piece on the left side of the blade. Now I have the pieces cut, time to install them on the cabinet. Align the top of this angle with the top of the cabinet or face frame, keeping it flush with the top. I like to use a scrap piece already cut to line the angles up. Looks good, time to nail it. Moving on to the front piece, some of these longer pieces are a little hard to manage. If you don't have a helper, just open up the door and rest your piece on top of the door. Now we're just gonna add a little wood glue to each surface. After the corner is nailed together, continue nailing the rest of the molding. That's how you attach crown molding to a face frame. If you happen to have a cabinet with full overlaid doors or a European style cabinet with no face frame, the most efficient way is to create the whole assembly together, the cleat and the molding, fill the holes and paint it, and then attach it to the top of the cabinet. That's it, that's two ways to install crown molding on kitchen cabinets. I'm gonna fill the nail holes and paint it and call it good. For more tips like this, visit us at familyhandyman.com.